Hey everyone, uh, this is Kevin. Um, you know, I just wanted to uh, <clears throat> do a little bit of a study here on uh, the subject of repent and repentance. And so I'm going in the uh, Blue Letter Bible app here. And I'm going to type in repent. <clears throat> okay, it says repent occurs in 43 verses in the in the KJV. Okay. <clears throat> a lot of these down through here are, um, you know, Old Testament references. And, of course, they use a, there's a different Hebrew term uh, for repent than there is the in the New Testament. We're going to focus on the New Testament, however, because um, a lot of the <clears throat> times when we hear this discussion in, among those in the church, that they talk about, you know, the need for repentance and basically that um, I think they, they mentioned that <clears throat> we need to like repent on a daily basis or else we somehow lose the salvation that we once had. <clears throat> so um, let's just take a look. Uh, you know, some of these verses right here, these are Matthew, you know, and, you know, this was uh, John the Baptist saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I think I've mentioned before that, John the Baptist was re referring to a kingdom, when he said the kingdom of heaven, he was referring to the millennial kingdom. He's referring to a kingdom that <clears throat> is going to be here on the earth that Jesus Christ rules over as the Messiah. That's what he was talking about when he was uh, talking to, guess who? The Jews in Judea, he was saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is hand. And then we have... Other uh, passages here, uh, another one in, in Matthew, we have Mark, Luke. Oh, we don't have any from John. No references of repent in uh, the Gospel of John. We go into Acts, and Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you notice every time when it says here, it's saying repent, <clears throat> you know, but it's not saying repent of your sins. It's saying repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Uh, repent therefore of thy wickedness. Okay, you could maybe say that to be, you know, similar to, to repenting of sin. But basically, let me just go to one of these. I'm just going to, I'm just going to one of these right here. And one of the scriptures, and I'm going to go to... That verse 30 right here up the top, and interlinear, we're going to look at the Hebrew, I mean the uh, Greek terminology here for repent, the Greek word, okay? <clears throat> okay, here it is in Greek, okay, and okay, here it is. It's uh, Strong's G3340. Mataneo, or Mataneo, I think is how it's pronounced, which is the Greek word that we translate into English as repent. Now, here's what it says down here, outline of biblical usage. Number one, to change one's mind, i.e., to repent. Number two, to change one's mind for better, heartily to amend with abhorrence of one's past sins. Okay. That's what it says right there, to change one's mind. That's what happens when you repent. You change your mind. Okay? I mentioned this before, but that's exactly what it says right there, to change one's mind. That's what's happening when you, you know, when you call upon Jesus, when you, when you put your trust in Jesus Christ for salvation, when you get convicted by the Holy Spirit that you have a need for salvation, a need for a Savior. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to, there's something I want to go to right now. Uh, okay. Here it is. Okay, Acts 
Now, this is, you know, concerning when Paul was in, uh, Paul and Silas were in prison and there was an earthquake and the, the, uh, the door opened to the, to the jail <clears throat> and the jailer thought that Paul and Silas had escaped and he was going to be in big trouble. And so then it says right here in verse 29, then he called for a light and sprang in and there and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He basically, by the fact that they did not escape, they didn't leave and put his life in danger with the Roman government. He saw something about them and, and he, he had already been seeing it about them, obviously. But he was convicted by the Holy Spirit, I think, that he wanted to be saved. He wanted to be like them. And he wanted to know, what to, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. You notice he didn't say, he really didn't say it there. They didn't say to him to repent of your sins. They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Okay, um, if we go to, uh, we go back a little bit, we go to um, Acts, I think 837, let's see, now this is the, the in Acts 8, this is talking about when Philip was, was uh, joined with the, the chariot that the uh, eunuch was on, and the eunuch was reading the prophet Isaiah, okay, and he says right here, and Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like, like, like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at that same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And this is one of the scriptures that you will find is omitted from many of the modern versions. Verse 37, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Okay, so <clears throat> basically, right there, the eunuch wanted to know what it was that would hinder him from being baptized. He understood what Philip told him about the gospel, told him about Jesus, and he wanted to know, what can I do to be saved? Basically, what do I need to do to be baptized? What's, you know, before that? And he said, he said to him in verse 37, and if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. If you believe on what? Believe on Jesus Christ. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he, very, he at that point made it clear that he was putting his trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. Okay, now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to I'm going to go to a very famous passage of Scripture that all of us have read and many of us know by heart. John 3.16, okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the, the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. There again, speaking of salvation coming by believing on Jesus Christ, not by being living a good life, going to church, doing good works, being baptized, 
No, by believing on Jesus Christ for salvation. Okay? And and right there, nowhere does it say anything about being about repenting every day to keep your salvation either. And I've gone into this before about how there's plenty of scripture to show that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption and that we that you know every everyone that uh that Jesus has has been has been brought to Jesus stay, you know they have salvation they don't lose it uh no man's able to pluck uh no man uh, no one is able to pluck uh those who are saved out of you know I'm I'm misquoting but you know basically the scripture that says uh, that no man is able to pluck out uh, those that are saved out of the Father's hand. Okay. Um, all right. So basically, that, that's what I have to say today on on the subject of repentance. I hope that you understand what I'm talking about here, that uh, salvation is by grace through faith. It's by believing on Jesus Christ for salvation. And it's not by any works that we've done. It's not by continuing to do works. We do good works after we get saved because of our salvation, because we become a new creature in Christ. Okay? But uh, certainly we don't work our way to salvation. Nor do we keep our salvation by doing good works or by continually repenting, which means to change one's mind. Okay, God bless you for now, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.